All right, just thought I'd do a little catch up here on what's been going on with the Z lately. It's mainly just me taking care of a few little details. I'm just kind of kind of weird about that. Uh, the first thing I did was I you like the incorrect zip tie. Oh well, whatever. I cleaned up this area a little bit right in here where I had previously used a little, you know, connector to join this vacuum hose. What I did here was I used a, um, I used a small brass tube that stuck between where here where it was here and where it was cracked, and then I put some heat shrink around that to make it just neater and tighter and less likely to continue cracking the fragile tube that's buried inside the wiring harness. I got rid of the uh, the, the tie wrap around here and properly sealed this with some silicone safe sealer. So that's all nice and snugged up now. Let's go down the front. Excuse me. Okay. I got a uh, new wire loom set. So this is all much neater looking as you can see. But these were broken and not the correct ones. So I attempted to make that all nice and neat. Uh, and here's my... finally got the battery done the way I wanted to. Got the hole down installed. I've got the uh, battery connector with the molded in wiring. I hate those kind that just use clamps. Same on this side. It's got this little rubber protector over it. And it's, you know, it's also the same, it's same as this, except it's when we got a single wire, because that's all that was needed for the fuse, fusible link. This one required two ground wires, one to the EFI ground, one to the chassis ground. So that's all hooked up. I got rid of the, uh, there's a little plastic tie holding this on. Just This is our early 75 when they only had this, uh, the one fuse link box. There's actually two fuse links in there. Um, this was kind of loose and not very secure. I was afraid I was going to lose it, so I ended up taking just a little dab at silicone that I used on the uh, airflow meter, on the airflow, whatever it is, airflow meter, to make sure that wouldn't pop off. Uh, see, on the battery cables, I had to custom fit them because this down here wasn't correct, so I've got a little copper, like most of these you see in welding equipment, to hook up the, the starter ground. The positive was okay. I know you can't see it. Let me back up. Oh, I got a new, uh, place the radiator hoses. So I've got some new radiator hoses, top and bottom. I used the correct, uh, hose clamps. What I need to do next is go through and replace all these worm gear style clamps that, are been, that were used in the EFI. That wasn't me. So I have to go through and replace those. I'll probably go down to the junkyard and get some because they're better than the cheap garbage you buy at the auto parts store. Uh, the only thing I have left to do really is I'm going to have to, let me go back on the other side again, I should have been over there before. I haven't done anything with the new 5-speed yet, that's that's work in progress. The only other thing I need to really figure out is, let me try and get the little light here and actually use it. Okay. Uh, we don't mind it a little bit more. There we go. Uh, let's, see, let's see if you can see it from this angle. Okay, there we go. Right down. I'll put the light here. I'll leave the light here. There you go. See it now. This thing right here. That's the water temperature switch. And that activates this solenoid here which activates the EGR valve so that the EGR is not functional when the engine's cold. Apparently that's not good. I don't really understand it, but whatever. It's not supposed to be that way. That water temperature switch doesn't work and is very expensive to find. It's a normally closed switch that opens up when you get about 150, 160 degrees. And that's the reverse of most fan switches are usually normally uh, open and close when they hit a certain temperature, not to mention it's usually a higher temperature. So a regular old fan switch is not what you want. So what I'm going to do is fabricate my own. I've got uh, some parts to do that. I'm going to have to remove that from the thermostat, drill out the bad stuff, and insert this, uh, this thermal switch in there that I've got that should work and make all the connectors up. So that'd be a, that's on the agenda. I'll be doing that soon. 
but outside of that, uh, it's got a few details of tighten up. I think I have a s slow leak down in my air conditioning system. We'll do, take a little closer look at that later and see if we can figure out what's going on. Uh, other than that, it's, it's all run pretty good. Anyway, I just wanted to update a few of the little details. I'm all about the details. More later. Thanks for watching. Turn this off.